Presented by Caltech. So I was fortunate, or unfortunate enough, to be born and raised in Florida, the craziest part of America. <laughs> and uh, you know how Florida is in the South, and the South is pretty infamous for its deeply Christian roots. And I would say that that kind of sums up my household as well. So my parents were devout Christians, and they actually founded a Chinese Presbyterian church right in the middle of Central Florida. And when you really think about it, that's not an easy task for immigrant Chinese parents to do, because you need to have the logistical understanding and you need to communicate with other people in English uh, to get this to work. And not only did they do that, my dad was also an elder of the church, so he often did sermons both in English and in Chinese, and my mom was also the worship coordinator for the weekly worship services at my church. So naturally, I was pretty proud to be the son of the most famous Mr. and Mrs. Lee at my church. And that kind of showed. <laughs> that certainly did show uh, to both my peers at my school and also to my peers in my Sunday school. So there would be times when I was arrogant and proud just to be like, hey, I'm like the son of, you know, elderly or something like that. But more importantly, I think it showed more in that I was kind of like the moral police for friends and not friends. Uh, one example was in preschool, when I was like four years old, I vividly remember this. Uh, I was, uh, we got like stamps if you behaved well. So one day, and the only day out of that year, I got two out of three stamps. And I was distraught because I wanted three stamps. I've always been getting three stamps. I thought I was like a perfect kid and I got two stamps one time. And I was like in tears, like why is this happening? And my dad told me that apparently I said like the S word. And then from that moment on, I did not swear and I vowed not, never to swear again. And that holds today. So as you can imagine, when I saw my fellow friends swearing in like an elementary school, I'd be like, hey man, that's not cool. Watch your profanity and use better words. Um, and another example was freshman year of high school, we were watching August Rush in English class, which is like a PG movie. There's really not that much you can show in that. Uh, there was this one scene where the male lead and the female lead like loved each other and they slept together on the balcony. And I kid you not, during like this emotional scene, I literally out loud said, that's bad, because the prospect of premarital sex was just so barbaric to me. So, you know, all the classmates just, you know, kind of looked at me. And then my teacher actually kind of winced a little bit, and then she gave me this, this look and like mouth what to the other students. So, yeah, as you can imagine, this was kind of like how I was in general from elementary school all the way to the beginning of high school. And this personality is not really one that is uh, conducive to making friends. <laughs> yeah, poor me, but, and I think that sort of realization at first didn't hit me, but as middle school and high school went on, when you began moving from class to class, it began to dawn on me a little bit, where I was wondering why I was always walking to class alone, why I saw my friends talking with each other, why did people stay away from me in middle school, why did people stay away from high school, why did people stay away from me at my own church, and it was, a gradual process where I began to feel this like deep sense of loneliness. And this just kind of went on for the rest of my like uh, post-puberty. Now, around sophomore year, uh, I became acquainted with these uh, Muslim high schoolers. And we were acquainted because we were in this uh, AP World History class. So there were like in-class study sessions that we would have, and we would work as groups. And it was puzzling to me because unlike basically 99% of the other population, this group seemed to see my loud personality as rather endearing. <laughs> like they would actually go out of their way to talk to me in class for you know, longer than three minutes. It was certainly uh, refreshing, but it was also puzzling because it's just something I've never experienced before. And then, you know, this, this progressed over and over. Um, I think in the middle of the year, we actually went to Epcot together. They invited me to join their field trip group. And this got to the point where I became so genuinely happy and I began to see, it seemed to me that they were genuinely enjoying my presence and they genuinely really appreciated me as a friend and as a person. I remember uh, junior year, I walked home from school and then I got a phone call, uh, which didn't really happen back in the day, but I, I picked it up and it was, it was 
kind of confused because I don't, usually don't get phone calls because I have no friends. And uh, on the phone, these two friends, Manir and Yumna, were on just saying, hey, John, uh, I just wanted to know what kind of cupcakes you, got, you wanted for tomorrow. And I did not really understand why they were making me cupcakes. I did not solicit anything. I don't think I did anything worthy of deserving cupcakes. Uh, so I was kind of confused on the line, but I'm not, I'm not going to say no to that. So I said chocolate as my flavor because that was the only thing that came up in my mind. And they were like, yeah, absolutely, sure. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll bring those cupcakes to you. And then I hung up the phone and didn't really think too much about it besides the confusion that I had initially. And then I came to school the next day, and sure enough, they brought this Tupperware like this big, both of them, and then they just gave it to me. And there were like 30 chocolate muffins inside here. And I was like dumbfounded. I was like, what, what did I do as a person to deserve such thing, something like this? And they were like, oh, I'm just really thankful that you're our friend and that you helped us with like a homework set like last week. Like, this is high school. We, we often help each other with homework like in general. At Caltech, this is something that we just do. I did not see it as something that was worthy of getting 30 muffins for. And this just didn't stop there. One of my other friends, Nirali, um, she frequently drove to my house to like deliver me textbooks that I would forget, or even sometimes just to check up on me and see how I was doing. She even talked with my mom a lot, and it got to the point where my mom was you know, appreciative and happy of her because she cared about me so much. And another one of my friends, Zamina, she would bake cupcakes when she was upset because she found joy in making other people joyful. I could not really wrap my mind about how, how selfless these people were about putting others first over, over themselves. And I'm going to say it worked, because it made me feel like, wow, these are some incredible friends. It got to the point where I actually enjoyed going to school, <laughs> right? Usually you don't hear that, but especially in my case, when I have to go to school, I have to wake up at 5.15 AM every single morning to prepare for a one hour long bus drive. And all of that was worth it. I actually looked forward to doing it, because every time I saw them in the morning, I knew that I had another day to spend with them. And so the, although this group gave me a lot of joy, I was also pretty confused. As I mentioned before, uh, you know, I'm Christian, and they were Muslim. And as many of you are familiar with, there is tension between these two groups. And it was puzzling to me because it's not just minor differences. This, like, the, a core part of both of our identities is completely off. Like, we're extremely different. And you see the xenophobia in America and in Europe, like, even recently of how how, how this is escalating. So I was definitely confused, because the South is also uh, a little bit more of that. And I just didn't really understand. I thought I was the supposed enemy of these Muslim friends, but they were showing me so much kindness, so much love. And it was at this point that I realized that I think I finally tasted the sweetness of unconditional love. As a Christian, you know, unconditional love is one of the core principles that we learn. And I was taught this ever since I was young, because my parents were devout Christians, but it wasn't through that that I got to see it. My Muslim friends were the ones that gave it to me. And you know how I mentioned how my personality was extremely like, toxic. Seeing this actually helped me see a core principle of Christianity, where me being an undeserving sinner, and I was still loved by God because he sent Christ down for me, and it made me begin to see my own identity in a much brighter light. It's strange because I feel like I don't have an excuse to not understand my own identity from the, like the first 18 years. I've been taught consistently. My parents have been lecturing me. I've been reading books, reading self-pep talks, reading sermons, or listening to sermons. But it was through the action of you know, eating those chocolate muffins, receiving the book from the Raleigh, and, you know, hearing their laughter and drying their tears that I think I finally began to transcend from knowing about love to knowing love. Thank you. <laughs>